Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name's Dr. James Gill and you've joined me today for another clinical skills video. Today we're going to be looking at the detail of how to perform the digital rectal examination. Now this is a very intimate examination so consent and care for the patient has to be two of our most important um, factors during this examination. Before I would go ahead to perform the digital rectal examination I'd want to make sure the patient absolutely understood what it was that we were going to be doing. So I'd explain to the patient it will involve climbing up onto the couch, they'll be pulling down both their trousers and their underwear and then I will be inserting a gloved finger into their anus to feel around uh, the rectum and in the case of a male also checking the prostate. I would highlight to the patient that can be uncomfortable but the procedure should take no more than five to ten seconds. Personally I find giving the patient that sort of time window is very important because it gives the patient the understanding of how long things are likely to take during the actual examination itself. Now Ordinarily in an examination, it's always useful or important even to offer a chaperone to a patient. For a digital rectal examination, I am insisting on a chaperone in the room. Um, now the patient, uh, where possible, is able to choose a male or female chaperone. However, if the patient declines a chaperone, then I personally would not proceed with that uh, intimate um, examination. Personally, I feel that we need to be incredibly cautious um, with regard to our approach to the digital rectal examination because particularly from the aspect of a male patient, this is the most invasive clinical examination that we will do. Even examination of the external genitals is still external and I think that's very, very important. So, with that in mind, we need to prepare for uh, the examination. So, I would um, ask the patient to sit on the bed initially whilst I'm getting myself ready. Now, I would always recommend that you prepare your um, apron first. Now, what I'm meaning by that, I'm meaning actually open the thing out because even here, it's taking me a moment or two to get the two piece of plastic to come apart. The reason why that's important during your examination, you just want to make sure that your exam is moving forward in an easy, careful manner. So with your apron prepared, we're going to go over the top and turn to tie the um, straps behind at the rear. I would strongly recommend that you um, do your apron before you apply gloves because trust me it's very challenging to apply the apron when you've got the gloves on the plastic will stick to it. So with that in mind uh, some people will gel their hands before we go forward um, with the placement of the gloves. Um, personally I don't think it's needed but again for completion. Then we're going to get our gloves and at this point make sure the patient is prepared and ready for the examination. It can be very useful to get a sheet of paper to um, drape over the patient in order to maintain their modesty. So I get the patient to initially lie on their back and then roll over to face uh, away from me and I'd have the patient shuffle backwards so that their buttocks were in line with the edge of the bed. I will keep a hand on the patient's um, upper thigh in order to help steady them to make sure there's no risk of them rolling backwards uh, from the bed. Highly unlikely, but again, we need to make sure at all points we are looking after the patient. Once we have the patient in position, it's vitally important we take the pen torch and we shine it around the anus between uh, the buttocks. So we're going to be looking for the presence of any hemorrhoids, any fissures, uh, any uh, masses that might be suggestive of anal cancer and uh, any rashes as well that might suggest something like a fungal infection. So we get our uh, aquagel, uh, we apply that liberally to uh, the gloved finger and then we again highlight the patient are they still happy for the examination to go forwards and uh, that um, I'm going to apply the finger now and to take a breath as we do so that can often relax the muscles and help the finger to be inserted more easily. We're going to insert with the pulp of the finger first and then we're going to rotate around uh, inside the rectum making sure we're feeling all aspects 
um, so that we can rule out, uh, certainly at the you know, five centimetre margin, no evidence of cancers. That should be sufficiently far in order to, uh, to allow us to examine the prostate. Then I'm taking the pulp of my finger and I'm pressing in and round and as I do so that's then allowing me to check the prostate so I'm checking for um, the central sulcus and the lobes on either side and then I'm rotating round to check around the anal margin and also the rectum and I'm trying to see if there's any evidence of stool in the rectum and then when we pull out we're having a close look at the finger to see if there's any blood on the glove. I've taken this shot for just use of, so you can visualise what your finger is going to encounter during the digital rectal examination. So here we've got the rectum and here we've got the prostate. So when the finger goes in, uh, you're going to be feeling the central sulcus and then one lobe and the other lobe of the prostate. So you're very much sort of limited by the tissue of the rectum itself for how you can assess uh, the prostate and hence why it is a, a moderately uncomfortable procedure because of how you're moving the patient internally. Once the examination has been completed, um, give the patient uh, paper to wipe themselves up and uh, we allow them to get dressed. It's very important that the chaperone remains in the room whilst the patient is still uh, undressed. Um, for the patient's protection and for yours. Once the examination has been completed, I'd ask the chaperone to leave and then I'll discuss uh, the findings with the patient. One of the things that is very important for us to note during the examination is the presence of blood on the glove or not. We're also going to be looking for any evidence of hard stool in the rectum during the examination. With that in mind, I hope that's been a useful examination for yourselves. If you've got any questions or comments, please put them in the box below and we'll see what we can do to help. Take care, we'll see you in the next one. Cheerio.